These Kamiwaza planes are all made by one smith. His name is Takeo Nakano-san. He's based in Echigo in Niigata Prefecture. Uh, and he does some beautiful, beautiful work. Here we have two ranges. We have uh, planes in 65 and 70 millimeters made with blue paper number one steel or algami number one. And here in the Polonia boxes, we have a 65 and 70 millimeter plane made with super blue paper steel or algami super. I've never used algami super. Uh, I've had a little fiddle with algami planes before. However, these planes come from the factory having already taken a shaving. That's not something I've ever experienced before, so I'm gonna see what it's all about, and I'm going to see what results I can get straight out of the box. Let's open them up. I've just spent a couple of hours with a Kamiwaza 70mm blue paper number one plane, which has been a real tough day in the office. Uh, I've got five pieces of timber here that I've played around with, made a lot of shavings, and I just thought I'd share some of my observations. What I've been working on is I've been working on getting a nice finish on, an, on uh, a piece of timber wider than the plane itself, on this bit of probably 100 on 100 macrocarpa, which is an offcut from our tea house and finished up beautifully. There's a piece of white cedar that was a gift from one of our customers and it's gonna be turned into something nice soon, uh, but the finish on the white cedar is just a sight to behold. Really, really lustrous, um, perfect really. The myrtle was a lot showier and is not as difficult a timber as it might look because although this grain is doing, doing a lot, there's really only one small little group of knots and they held together really, really well. The plane dealt with them very nicely. Um, the hardest piece of timber in this array is this piece of hewn pine which I keep around specifically for this purpose. If a plane can do a nice job on this piece of hewn pine, which changes grain direction about four times across its length and features a good number of little knots uh, just for extra fun, uh, if a plane can do well on those, it can do well on most timbers. Uh, on, this, on this piece of timber, there are a couple of small areas of, that it wasn't able to manage, but I've been using this, this plane without the chip breaker. It took a lot of effort to seat the blade. It was a much tighter fit than I would usually go for on my planes, but it worked really well uh, in the end. So I spent a few minutes going, I don't think this is gonna cut. With a few extra wax, it eventually got through, uh, but was very, very tight in the adjustment. Um, the chip breaker, I think, would need a little bit more work to make it fit nicely and correctly. 
and on the sole of the plate I had to remove a very small high spot that manifested itself just on the side of the mouth. Uh, with that side, so high spot removed, beautiful shavings were a result. Before I did that I was really only getting very, very thin partial you know, reshavings. So what that leads me to conclude is this is not a plane for a beginner. Although it will give very, very good results without going through a tuning process, it does require knowledge of Japanese planes to really get it to perform. Added to that, throughout its life, the blade will need to be sharp and regularly to maintain the performance, the sole will need to be managed to maintain its performance, um, and the chip breaker process will probably be something that will Im improve it as well. And I think if it had that chip breaker fitted, it would have dealt with this with no problems at all. So, I've had a great day. I hope you've enjoyed watching some shavings being brought into the world, uh, and I hope that you're feeling excited for your next project with a Japanese plane. Happy woodworking.